It gets cold sometimes, so cold you can't drive an EV. You can't uh, think straight, uh, and maybe that's why some people really actually think you can't drive an EV when in fact it turns out you can. Uh, the Midwest gets very, very cold. Uh, so we're going to have a little chat with some uh, friends of ours in the Midwest to figure out uh, just how terrible EVs truly are. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm joined by Brian Reby from Brian Reby jo Drives Electric, who I had the pleasure of meeting in Texas at the recent... Uh, uh, after party for the Cybertruck. That was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks yeah. for joining us, Brian. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, what uh, what a fun what a fun tweet. I didn't tell you before when I scheduled you which tweet it was going to be, but it turns out you were already on the ball because you had seen the same silliness that I had. So let me just read this to you. Uh, took my wife into work today for safety's sake. It's negative 45 this morning. I saw a fellow sitting in his EV at a charging station. The businesses were still closed for him to stay warm and dawdle while his car charged. I briefly spoke with him as he went into the store. We'll get to that. He said he's been sitting in the car running the heaters and it was taking about twice as long to charge. The car's range was 280 kilometers in the cold, he said. This fellow said his trip to Saskatoon from Kelowna, Kelowna takes about three times longer for charging time, sitting time. He charge, his charges today were $100 and two hours of sitting with heaters on and the battery was only two thirds charged. Two hours of sitting. He said he liked his EV, but only in the summer. But he said it's only if it's not too hot because AC drains the battery real fast. So if you live in Canada, and are considering buying an EV, make sure your pockets are deep and you're never on a schedule. I wish him luck. His name is Jack, uh, John. So uh, that part, I mean, that's a citation if I've ever heard one. That's super crazy. What do you think? What do you, what do you think about this uh, very, very plausible story uh, at all? Uh, it's a, uh, that's a whopper. I mean, there's truth in it, like, you know, any good, good tall tale, but you know, it's really not that bad. I live in Minnesota. It's very cold right now. And I've lived with an EV here. This is my sixth winter uh, with a Tesla. And I haven't really had any problems. So can it be awful? Yes. But is it that awful all winter and all summer, apparently? No. No. So uh, let's look at this because it's fun. It's fun. I saw a fellow sitting in his EV at a charge. The businesses were still closed for him to stay warm and dawdle while his car. So he can stay. I mean, the, he needs the businesses to stay warm, but the businesses were closed, Brian. They were closed. Yep. I briefly Nothing spoke with him. <laughs> I briefly spoke with him as he went into the store. Hmm. Well, you can't. Do Is that he a burglar? <laughs> <laughs> it's the crime of the century. There's no police. He had a oh. sack with a dollar sign on his shoulder. He was going in. If this person was real, they would be very suspicious. But he is real because we've got that very valuable citation. His name is Jack. So you've driven in. So I, I would like to point out, I, I pulled up this, which is uh, some just some kind of weather stuff here. Uh, this these are record uh, record weather. Uh, we've got uh, December warmest on the on on his. But anyway, we've got some more fun stuff. Uh, these are the coldest temperatures of last December. Now we can agree that December is winter, right? I think so. I believe it is. Would you say that these are uh, normal December kind of winter temperatures? Uh, they're pretty cold, but they're. You know, I, w I wouldn't doubt them at all. Okay. Because it does, it can get very cold in the Midwest, and it does. And that is true also into Canada. You can look at, again, this uh, map here and see that it does get, you know, colder where you are, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but looking at this, uh, these are not negative 45, I can't help but notice. Do you know there are a lot of states that have never had negative 45 degree weather. I've heard that, yeah. 
Uh, I've been to West Yellowstone at Christmas, and that was my record. It was negative 15. It's very unpleasant. Uh, the, suspe- the, the van barely turned on. The suspension was stiff because the hydraulics were a little gummy. Um, is it fair to say that negative 45 is an outlier in temperatures to such a degree that it doesn't really mean much? Yes, definitely. I would say that's a once or twice in a winter event, maybe. And that's that's with wind chill in Minnesota anyway. And that means, uh, and again, some states, a lot of states have never had in their entire history, negative 45 degrees. How well do gasoline cars function in temperatures like that? I'm glad you asked because my neighbors today had two trucks pulled up next to each other trying to jumpstart or figure out a battery issue or potentially an alternator issue. And I was feeling very sorry for them having to deal with that with their gas trucks. And I've had breakdowns in various gas cars in this kind of weather. Uh, It's, I think we had a high of one degree today. And it is not pleasant to do engine troubleshooting in this weather. It's tough on the fingers. It is tough on the fingers. When the temperature drops, your starter can struggle. Your, your, your battery can struggle. Voltage at those temperatures is, is suboptimal. Uh, once you get it started, uh, it's got to warm up all those fluids in the, in the crankcase, uh, which have gotten a little uh, thick uh, because of the temperature. And in a lot of these places, people will have uh, block warmers. Can you tell us what those are? Yeah, block heater is a plug you have sticking out of the front of your uh, diesel truck. Uh, You can also have it with a gas truck to keep the, I believe, to keep the the oil pan warm. Uh, But definitely for diesels, because that uh, diesel fuel gels in these cold temperatures. And so... Uh, you want to keep that a little toasty so it can flow. And uh, so apparently freezing point of diesel uh, looks to be, uh, starts to gel around uh, 15 degrees. So that's yeah, I, a whole lot warmer than one degree or negative 45. Yeah, we used to have some box truck at a, trucks at a company I worked for. And if somebody didn't plug those trucks in overnight, they were just dead in the morning. You, you know, we, sometimes you could plug them in, warm them up and get them to go, but sometimes they had to be towed, uh, you know, in this really cold weather. So you got to be really careful with diesels in the cold. Electric range can be shorter in weather like this. Uh, how much range impact have you experienced in, you know, Below freezing temperatures? Uh, Below freezing, I would say generally, you know, 20 to 30 percent drop on the really cold days, the negative uh, below zero days. The, yeah, I I usually say when people ask, uh, you can lose about 50 percent of your range. And that's on the cold wind, you know, blowing snow, you know, kind of days. And then you've got uh, gasoline cars, which, as everyone knows, get the same range, regardless of altitude, regardless of temperature. Not quite true, is it? No, definitely not. Uh, You know, I've got some friends up in North Dakota and um, somebody was taking a trip across. And, you know, today it was, I think, uh, 15 below. They were driving 70 miles an hour and had a headwind that was pretty strong. And, you know, they were, you know, just making it charger to charger and it wasn't pleasant, but it was, it was doable. But I've got another friend up there who uh, has two Teslas and they charge on 110 in their apartment and they've gotten by for five winters with just that. And then if they need a bigger charge, they go to a charger in town. That's exactly what I do. I just have 110 at home. 
My brother is an electrician, uh, and he is going to come out and uh, get it wired up for me in a couple weeks uh, as of three and a half years ago. So uh, any day, I am confident that will happen. And even though I didn't have an EV, I still spec'd it in because I will eventually, and I know getting you back here is going to be impossible. So, uh, but gasoline cars lose efficiency in very cold weather. Not 20% or 30, maybe not maybe 20%, but not 30 to 50%. So this is a, an electric car anomaly. How much slower is the charging? It all depends on how you've preheated your battery. Um, if you, well, you know, I charge at night. I, you know, plug in at home, charges overnight. It's fine in the morning. Um, so I don't really pay attention to level two speeds. Uh, but I did take, uh, take a stop at a supercharger the other day. Didn't have, like, I had maybe 10 minutes of preconditioning. And so it was charging at about uh, a minute per percentage. But that was over 50%. And again, with a cold battery. As it was warming up, it was charging a little faster. But then we were also getting into that higher part of the pack. So it was kind of evening out at that one minute per percentage. But had I then driven to another supercharger with that pack warmed up and charged there, it would have been normal supercharging speeds normal speeds. And the thing I like to point out when people say that, oh, I, my trips, I plan them so tight that I have to have a thousand miles of range. A gentleman on X yesterday literally said he needs a thousand miles of range before he'll consider it. And I said, well, for me to consider a gas car, I need gas to get down to 20 bucks a tank, 12 bucks a tank to match what I'm paying. I need it to um, be done at my home. I need someone to fuel it up at home. Uh, I need zero to 60 in four seconds, and I need it for under 50 grand uh, with seven seats. Uh, you in? You got something for me? You don't? Well, uh, and you never will, because that's not how gas cars work. Uh, yeah. You know, and with every vehicle, there's a give and take. You know, the, the right car for me might not be the right car for you. You know, if... If you're living in North Dakota and some of those places, an EV is not right for you yet. But if you're along the main highways, if you have a place to charge at home, it's really not nearly as inconvenient as people think it's going to be. On level one, a gentleman said to me, well, you can only add, you know, over 12 hours, you can only add 60 miles of range. I said, I, I, I'm not going to do the math. What I said is the average U.S. driver does 45 miles a day. 45 is less than 60. And I don't plug in for 12 hours. I plug in for 16, 20, you know, whatever it is. Right. Even if you're working a nine to five, you've got more than 12 hours to charge. And uh, I've known people who have level ones and commute. And what they do is all week, they charge up as much as they can. They'll start the week at 80. By Friday, they're coming in around 50. And then either they'll catch up over the weekend or just hit a supercharger. And yep. that's... That's what I do as well. If I've got back-to-back -back days where I've got to go long distances, I'll just hit a supercharger and it's done so quick. And the rates here, at least, are quite reasonable. Uh, I think I paid 20 cents at the, the one here and by the airport, I paid 12 cents at the mall late at night, which is close to what I pay at home. So that yeah, was very good. That's very good. And uh, I've got a friend in Vancouver, B.C. who who saw, I want to say, like five cents Canadian once at one charger one time. Great. Great. Wow. And if there was a gas station that sold gas for a dollar a gallon, but here's the thing. It takes 20, 30 minutes to pump. It pumps real slow. Uh, they'd be the only gas station left standing because you can't tell me people won't choose to save 60 70 dollars per trip per fill up when i see people sitting in line for 15 minutes at costco to save a dime yeah i'm about a block away from a costco maybe two blocks and yeah it's a constant line of suvs waiting to save a couple cents yeah you are close enough that the line blocks your driveway brian <laughs> <laughs> i can never get out these evs won't work that's it. That's exactly it. So guys, uh, Brian Reby did something really awesome. I want you to check it out. I'm going to put a little clip of it up on the screen without his permission. No, uh, 
at, at the <laughs> not only did he go to the Cybertruck uh, delivery event, uh, but he went to the after party. He did a lot of great footage. And then he also did uh, coverage of the actual road trip from Austin back to Minneapolis, Minnesota. I don't know where you are. Minnesota, Minnesota and yep. Minnesota. Yeah, I don't know where in Minnesota, but that's all right. Uh, uh, it's a south, big state. South of the Twin Cities. And I don't know where that is either. I have flown through uh, that, that airport and I understand the thing about the lakes now. It makes sense when you fly in. Uh, you've got a couple. Uh, so check out that footage. It's super great. His channel is quite small, but so professional. It's like really edited, really well shot. Uh, it's frustrating and annoying to me to see such good material that isn't mine. Uh, but then again, I don't make art. I, I, you know, I'm not a master chef. I make salami. It's pretty good salami, but it's, I know what it is. So guys, what did we miss in the comments? What are your thoughts on this absolute ridiculousness? Uh, uh, did we miss anything? Are there considerations? Are, are we wrong? You got to tell us because I'm sure uh, you will. And I appreciate that. So uh, like, subscribe, do the usual things, all that good stuff. And stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots somewhere a little bit warmer. <laughs>